Okay, welcome back. Um, straight into it. So this is my take on intonation. And frankly, it's the right take. I'm not really shy about saying that um, because it's true. It's just the, the best, most fun, most efficient way of tackling intonation on the trumpet. Now, hopefully everybody here knows the trumpet is not in tune. If you're tuning in and you've never heard that, let me be the one to tell you. The trumpet is not in tune. Play a scale with your tuner on, you'll see. Okay, so we've established that it's not in tune. We have some flat notes, we have some sharp notes. Let's say we're playing an F scale. F is flat, G is flat, A is sharp, B flat is sharp, C is sharp, D is flat, E is flat, F is sharp, right? So every note is out. There's no such, such thing as an in-tune note on the trumpet. How do we play in tune? You ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. So here's the bad way. Here's the way most people are, are sort of approaching this um, the wrong way. So let's say I've got, you know, I'm on a C trumpet. I've got my little trigger. It doesn't work great. I need to have it serviced, but I've got it. It's there. Um, I could take my F scale. And I can pull some notes down. I can lift them into place. I can even use my, my thumb. I can go to the trumpet store and buy a trumpet that has a really great, you know, thumb trigger or or pinky trigger or whatever and I can tune those notes like that you should do that you should definitely be using those triggers to tune your trumpet but what about the flat notes you can't kick those out anymore okay so we lift them up well what happens when I do that they get brittle. They also become hard to play. They get tiring and um, we're also more likely to miss the note because we're like lifting it closer to that F, which means we're more likely to hit an F instead. Um, not ideal. So here's here's the, the way I think you should be approaching intonation. And it goes back to what I was saying in, in the Arbin page 13, number 26, or I think it's page 26, number 13, um, which is that uh, sound is vibration. Sound on the trumpet is vibration, right? It's a sympathetic vibration. Um, that intonation element is so much easier to manipulate if you're coming at it from a baseline of zero, zero activation on your lip. You don't need to manipulate the note if the note is so Facile, is that the word? It's like the lightest of putties, right? You need the note to be um, like working with air, like working with the, the most, you know, malleable substance that you can possibly. Um, I'm coming off a really long Easter gig. I don't like have the most fresh face in the world, but I bet that... I can still do a pretty darn good job because I have a fundamental understanding of this principle, right? In fact, I know I do because this gig was crazy and I made it great. It was it was a great performance. So it wasn't perfect, you know, but that's okay. We're not after perfection. Here, here is, oh, I don't know. Let's see. Um, Robin Adair. You can probably hear the moments where I'm like very in tune, and then there are also some moments where I'm not as in tune. And if you go back and watch, you'll see that I start to lock a little bit, just a little, um, just a little, and it's enough to just interfere with that intonation pattern that much. 
right? And then you can hear it, A, because I'm like pretty in tune. So like anything that's like a little out of tune is really, really noticeable. Um, if I'm really careful not to lock up, I'm focusing on the sound and I'm thinking about like this whole face vibration, I guarantee that intonation would be better. I'm placing that last E and I don't like it. As soon as I don't place it, it'll sound more in tune. sound it becomes a sound that you're proud of and that you can live in and then your ear fixes that note the note is so um easily manipulatable that your ear will fix it without you having to lift it because you can hear a scale you can hear the do re mi fa sol la ti do right you, you know i can't sing it as in tune as i can play it um yeah you can also practice singing in tune because there is a connection between what you're able to sing and what you're able to hear, which then fixes the problem exactly like I just explained. So that's that's my approach on intonation. Maybe the first step is making sure that you know what intonation sounds like. So turning that tuner on and making sure that you are like step one of, of the 12 step program, right? Acceptance, I think it is like, um, I accept that I don't play in tune, that, that, that I can't lip something in tune without making sacrifices I'm not willing to make. That's step two, right? Step three is acknowledging that the trumpet will try to trick me into thinking step one and two are false. It's like this weird recursive problem. Um, step four, telling the trumpet it's wrong going back to the air, going back to the love of the sound, hearing an, ex an exciting sound in my head, expecting a si an exciting sound in my head before I play the trumpet. delivering something that's already on you know the recipient's front door it's already right there you just walk up to that dartboard put that dart in and you've won the game so think about this let it again i realize that this might sound i don't know revolutionary um i didn't believe it when i first heard it but if i hadn't i would not be the player i am today i zero chance of that zero chance that i would be anywhere near the player that i am today so i'm actually thankful for that because it's given me solutions to the problems that plague us you know on trumpet on trumpet so uh think about it don't take my word for it you go practice it you go try it um and give it a week and write me and let me know how it goes you need suggestions i'm here i'm all all yours just let me know all right um one more video coming tonight uh i want to talk about my descending lip slurs so keep on the lookout for that and i'll see you then <laughs>